social distancing is very important. What we're doing is illegal right now. If you're at home, you're watching Isolation TV. Mm. Hello, Alan Bro. Hello, Miss Warhurst. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What are we doing? We're having a chat. Well, yeah. The first, can I just firstly say I left my umbrella at your house. You did. It's behind the front door. It's been here ever since, and I'm wondering whose it is or who yeah, it belongs mine. to. Oh, yeah, damn, I, I was going to keep it. <laughs> it's, the one-month rule is it's yours, isn't it? It's been oh, here for a month. <laughs> it's so useful, and I was so annoyed because we may have had a lot of drinks at your house, let's mm. just say as mm. an example. And mm. when I got home, I went, where's my bloody umbrella? Oh, I left it at the <laughs> And now I don't know whether I can come over and touch the umbrella. Oh, touch my umbrella. That's a yeah. that's a great name for a song. <laughs> <laughs> it that's incorporates the... Mud Honey's "Touch Me I'm Sick" and Rihanna's oh, yeah. "Umbrella." Touch my umbrella. Yeah. The coronavirus song. <laughs> I I wonder if we could do a mashup of Mud Honey and Rihanna. Oh yes, of course. Oh no, it's not Mud Honey. It's Mud Honey. Touch me, I'm sick. It is. It is, isn't it? Touch yes. me, I'm sick. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. It is. Someone, it will, is. someone will write in. <laughs> if people um, already. Do you want me to deliver your umbrella to your front door and just, like, leave it there as an offering? With Helen's top, mind you. Her gold sparkly top is still here as well. I could leave it as an offering and and then just sort of walk, you know, walk away like a little sort of servant or something. Maybe we could do a sort of member checkpoint, Charlie, between East Berlin and West Berlin, and they would oh, hand yeah. prisoners over. What we could do is meet at a location between our two houses, and we could be mm. at least 1.5 to 2 metres apart, and you could throw me the umbrella, because what can go wrong when you throw an umbrella at somebody? <laughs> and the gold sparkly top, and then oh. we could have a chat and yeah. then go our separate ways. Oh, that sounds good. That that sounds yeah. very formal, but it sounds like the kind of meeting of this time that we find ourselves in right now. <laughs> I like yeah. it. We'll just we'll just agree on a like a central location between the okay. two places. And we'll do we have a, a brown paper bag full of money as well that I need to hand over for whatever um, oh. dark and mysterious reason, perhaps? God, that's I what wish this I sounds had a brown like. Paper bag. <laughs> I wish I had a brown paper bag full of money. I dream about if oh. someone just giving me a brown paper bag full of money. Oh, wouldn't that be good? And a job. A job would be good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's be honest, you and I and everyone we know, we've pretty much, we've pretty much, I mean, the calendar's free is what I'm saying until mm. the end of the year, if not longer. And it's, yeah, I can imagine you're pretty, pretty anxious and devastated about it all. How are you feeling? Uh, look, I, I feel okay because there's nothing I can really do about it. You know, I was doing this show, this musical of my first children's book, Charlie and the War Against the Grannies, mm. and then it's not happening anymore. And it was yeah. three years' work. And I must admit that I got a bit down and yeah, I did what I normally do when I get down, which is drink so much red wine that my skin changes colour. And uh, but now I've come out of that. Like it, it's a it's cycle. Like, like a one bloom. day, yeah, yeah. One day I'll just go, and oh, no, I can't do this anymore. And then I stop, and everything's much better. But I do need that. Like you know how Elizabeth Kuber Ross talks about the five stages of grief. Mm. All of mine are red wine. <laughs> So I get angry at red wine, I deny red wine, and then at mm. the end I accept red wine. But all the time mm. it's red wine. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's true. No one's ever dealt with this stuff before, and it is grief. We've, we're kind of, I'm, I'm grieving. I'm not entirely sure what I'm grieving, but I know that I'm scared. I have to be honest. It's pretty terrifying to think, you know, not just work-wise, but that someone I know might get sick or... Someone, I mean, I could, we all, anyone, it could, it's pretty scary. It's weird. It's, um, what do they say? It's like once in a decade. Oh, no, a century. Once in, not once in a decade. Imagine if this happened every 10 years. Once in a century experience. So, I mean, well, to history. Put in, to put it in context, though, 
that um, Spanish, influ- Spanish influenza um, pandemic killed 26 million people in mm. what was it, 1918. So not only had the war, First World War, killed millions of people, but then mm. 26 million people between the, it mainly targeted people between the ages of 20 and 40. Now, I, I'm not a um, infectious diseases person. This is just stuff that I've read. And the other thing is, and a mm. friend of ours, Kathleen, mentioned this, the AIDS epidemic, well, it was a pandemic, I imagine, mm. killed 30, has killed 34 million people yeah. since the yeah. 80s, which is 850,000 people every 10 years. Yep, yep. And so, so, I mean, yeah. this, is, this, this is bad, but things happen. Yeah, and, exactly. And... People are being pretty good about it and we'll get through it. And look, one of the advantages is I, because we normally have a cleaner. Yeah. Because we always had a cleaner because both my parents worked. So we always had a cleaning person once a week. And so we have that. I love tidying, but cleaning's just not, Not I'm not very good at it. No, but I was doing the vacuuming this afternoon. Yeah. And it's it's really satisfying. <laughs> well, how old are you, Alan? At what point in your in your life have you finally discovered that vacuuming is satisfying? Well, Wait. I've always what? Oh, I, I can I tell you one thing I've bought recently, and this is on similar lines. I bought a gurney. Do you know, like they a water a high powered water hose, high pressure, and. It is the best thing I've ever done. I want to. I want to sell it to everybody. It's the one of the most satisfying things. You go out on the cement and you just spray it clean. <laughs> I'm sure it's really environmentally unsound, but it's the best thing I've done. It's one it of the most really satisfying is. things. Yeah. That's yeah. Who knew? Um, well, Goodness. whenever I go, whenever I go home to visit my mother, mm. she would say to me, "Go next door and borrow that high pressure thing that Bob has." <laughs> Okay, and clean the house, the outside of the house. So, Mum, I'm here to visit you. And she said, oh, we'll see, I'll see you at dinner. And it was, she would always ask me during the winter, and, and where I grew up was next to a mountain, and it was bloody freezing, and I'd be out yeah. there with this high-pressure thing, and you know what, so you just get water all over you. Oh, that's awful. That's like, that's actually torture. She was torturing you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... She owed me some torture because of how I'd been a teenager. And mm. I, I was thinking about something interesting. I saw a family. So we live across from a park, right, as you know. Mm-hmm. And I saw a family together and I realised teenagers had been socially distancing for years. Oh, yeah, of This course. teenager was walking behind her mother about <laughs> three or four metres and teenagers have been doing that forever. And I think teenagers are going to be the safest people in the pandemic because they're just like, Ugh, we have to go for a walk with our parents and they're miles away. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it. What a beautiful perspective. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And they never want to come out of their rooms. It's not no. a problem. This is not thing. a they're problem either, at all. From the ages of 13 to 18, they're actually self-isolating and doing social distancing. They've been doing it forever. And since teenagers were invented in the 1950s, since they built the first teenager, I don't know what happened. I know, I know. I've often thought about that. I mean, did teenagers obviously existed before then, but were they just not allowed to express themselves in any way, shape or form? I don't think they were. And then James Dean came along and they all went, oh, we're going to be bad. <laughs> or I don't hormones. know, actually. Yeah. Well, this is, they must have had hormones. Of course. But maybe they just... Maybe the, the, the times restricted them socially and then half of them were married at 18 and had babies, yeah. so they didn't get to really be young. Are and you those, huge, those huge um, sort of structured dresses that you see in, like, happy days and stuff, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be crude, but giving up one of them would have been real hard. <laughs> hey, those dresses are great for social distancing as well because they've got the underskirt, and the underskirt keeps anyone away because it sort yeah. of spreads out and it keeps everyone away. You can't get close. We should all start wearing them. 
Maybe that's it, Miss. Maybe there were no teenagers because of the big skirts. And when the skirts got smaller, they were all rubbing up against each other. And they just went, oh, I'm into this. Yeah, well, you know what they used to do before then, before you could rub up against people, when the, with the large skirts. That's why winkle picker shoes were invented. So the gentleman could pop the, the long foot, you know, the long pointy shoe, pop the yeah. long pointy foot up the large skirt of a lady across the table. That's that's what winkle pickers were all about. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. So uh, how how do I ask the questions? That I have so many questions in my head. Was it for lifting up the skirt, or was it for alerting the lady to the fact that you were mm. into her, or were you into her? You, it was uh, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, and a little bit of column C. <laughs> All of those. The oh, lifting, the alerting, and the into. <laughs> imagine you're at dinner and suddenly you're being fucked up. Oh. Hi, Daisy. Oh. Great time. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that you just decided to come in at that time. Nice what to see are you, Daisy. you doing? Hi. Can you leave while Dad's saying really unpleasant things about shoes? <laughs> oh, God, oh. I feel bad. <laughs> no, it's um, me that should feel bad. Nine-year-old working into her father saying, what fucking? <laughs> but this is the thing about it, this coronavirus. Everyone's doing the work from home via these sort of apps and stuff. Have you seen some of the footage of people that have mucked up when they've done a work conference, like a Zoom party? No. Have you seen much of this stuff? Oh, it's oh, genius. Helen showed me a woman who couldn't stop her. She um, did a filter that made it look like a potato with lips potato. and eyes. And yes. she was the boss and she couldn't turn it off. <laughs> it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It was the best. But there's another one where it's like this girl called Karen or something and she's in a Zoom meeting with, there's probably three, six, nine, twelve people and she decides to go off to the bathroom but forgets where she is and puts the laptop down on the side while she takes her pants down and sits on the floor. But the best bit is, the best bit is everyone at work just kind of goes, Oh, Karen, as if she's like they're used to this kind of behaviour from her. And she's looked up in the most with the most horrified look on her face and just slammed down the laptop. Oh, it was awful. What <laughs> sort of, a, was it at quite a gynecological angle? Oh, no, it was on the sides, but you, so you could see her sort of, because, you know, she popped it down on the ground thinking, just not thinking, thinking she was out of the front shot. So, you know, when you hold the laptop up in front yeah. of you, you can't, so she just went and put it on the side while she sat down thinking she could pick it up again, but she recorded her entire self sitting on the toilet. <laughs> In the time of a pandemic, who puts their laptop on the floor of the toilet? Oh, of course. Well, who takes their laptop to the toilet in a meeting? I mean, what if, what if there are noises? Now, <laughs> <laughs> now, Miss, I have to ask you a question, and you don't have to yeah. answer it, but have you ever done a radio interview while you were on the toilet? Ooh. Hmm. I can't say that I have. I'm surprised no. that I haven't, but I can't say that I have. Have you? Yes. Yeah, tons of times. <laughs> Numerous phoners on the can, yeah. Alan. Though. Numerous phoners on the can. And occasionally you get, like, <laughs> if you've got multiple ones in a row, like, you know, if we're doing yeah. a Specs and Speak special or when we're doing the finale, there were like tons of, in a row and they all happened quite quickly. Oh. I just got trapped in the toilet for about five of them. And at least one oh, person will always... flush. No, you can't flush. And you can't... Also, the thing is, the reason you're in the toilet, you can't actually pursue that reason because of how you're speaking to someone. <laughs> and if all of a sudden... <laughs> you just... One plots out... <laughs> I'm going to give it all away. It is. Taken and a usually, bad turn. Oh, it has taken a bad turn. And usually <laughs> the echo gives it away as well. It's like, are you on the toilet? Call me back is what you say when you hear that kind of echo of the room. 
Yeah. But, you know, yeah. we've got to do what we've got to do, and that's why we're doing this because, yeah. you know, at least you've got we my are. front room, but if we do it down the track, you'll probably get me in the bathroom. <laughs> Well, I didn't notice the back. Like I've, I've got uh, there's washing hanging up. I haven't really thought this through at all. Like it's a very. Have you got your undies hanging up? That's a good good I'd... look. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just towels. No. I think I did a lot. I think I did a load of undies this, this afternoon, so they're still out on the balcony getting dry. And because I'm an old man now. Before we started doing this, I checked the Bureau of Meteorology app to see if there was any rain nearby. Oh, because that ma- that matters. <laughs> well, I you don't need want... to know that your undies are going to dry. That's it. You don't what want. You do and I mean, them? I'm washing. I'm washing the whole family's undies, and you don't. People get upset when they say, "Where are my undies?" And you say, "Well, they're still a bit damp from last night." And I mean, yeah. when you're yeah. younger, that's completely acceptable. But when you're older, you when don't. You're older. Say that. You just go. Yeah. And you also go. What kind of fungal infection could I get? That's where my my mind's going. What kind of fungal <laughs> infection could you get from having a damp undie, Alan? That's not safe or wise. I, miss, I I trust that you have not in your life put on damp undies. <laughs> no, I know, but you heard about like on. <laughs> this is awful, like on those television shows like Big Brother and whatnot, because they all get around in the spa way too much. Um, they, they get around in a lot of damp undies. They have the most phenomenal amount of like things like UTIs and that sort of thing. Like it's just a hotbed of damp undies. It's not good. What's it's a not UTI? Good and a urinary tract infection. <laughs> oh, you, oh. That's what you get from damp undies, Alan. <laughs> oh, God. I, if I haven't lived. I mean, yeah. this is uh, a whole new world. A whole new really, world. Did, they, did you have to wear damp undies on um, I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here? Well, no, but you have to shower in them because so we had to shower. Well, it was we had, we had cameras on us. So um, even though they said it wasn't going out, any of the footage, we still had cameras on us. So I kept, I kept my undies on because like it was like, very confronting. So yeah, you have damp undies for a bit. You, you know, you looked after yourself and changed them, but you'd have to shower in your clothes if you're a bit um, what's uh, demure. No, that's not the right word, is it? A bit shy. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not hardly right demure. <laughs> um, so you, you like so your bra and your knickers, and you had bra to and knickers. Them. You had to shower in them, but by the end of it, we were all so over it. It, it was amazing actually because I thought. I mean, I'm pretty prudish and I'm, I certainly am not very proud of this vessel that is, you know, I don't put it out there for people to see and go, yeah, I look unreal because that's my, the last thought. But by the end of it, you were just like, oh, fuck it, whatever. You've all seen it. And the cameras would be on you and be like, oh, you've seen it. There's nothing like you just lose all sense of um, worry about that. It was actually really good in that sense. Cause, and it was really hard to shower too. If people think it's like, oh, there'll be a drain and stuff. No, it was just a cold water tap over you and you're standing on rocks. There was no drain where the water went off. So it was, it was kind of um, confronting. You couldn't stand there delicately and hide from the cameras, put it that way. You were falling all over get, the place. You could get, get in the there. down into the undies. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do. It's so it's the path. Like, yeah, it was not good. It was not good. But you know, you get used to it. You lose your you lose your sense of worry about the stuff. And I think it was really good, really good for me. Yeah, well, terrifying that footage is out there, Alan. But because <laughs> that ain't pretty. Say, how did that? When you came back, was that one of the things that was a, a really good effect of being on that show? That you felt less um, concerned or worried about your own body. For yourself, yes. not for other people, but for yourself. Well, absolutely. Um, I just had to give up. Like, you know, I think when we get to a certain age, I know you and I are of the middle ages now. Um, I think no, I'm, more, you know, I'm more the dark ages, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I think you just build up so many barriers, you know, and you know how to protect yourself and you know how to cover yourself and all of that stuff. So 
not just physically, but I think psychologically as well and mentally, you know, you know what situations you can and can't go in because you know what you can cope with and what you can't. So going into the jungle really changed all of that. It just threw it all up in the air. And, yeah, I just had to go in that moment. I had to go, I don't care. I don't, I can't care about this. I can't control it and I can't care about it. And I reckon that was one of the best things I walked away with. I, just that controlling aspect I think that I probably do have done for a long time of, you know, myself and, yeah, it was good. It was quite liberating, Alan. You should try it one day. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be any good at it, though. Someone said to me, oh, there's a gentleman in your room. Can you see Daniel? <laughs> yeah. And the, can I just say, he did want to, it's really interesting. When someone tries to get out of a room or, say, go into a theatre late mm. and they bend, they crouch down, it's so much more obvious than the person <laughs> just standing up and slowly and just walking, walking the door. behind you. I know. And you, goes, you got his plumber's crack as well. Yeah. Because <laughs> the thing is, when you stand up and walk to the door, it looks like you're meant to be doing it. When you roll off the bed really ungratefully, <laughs> showing us your ass, and try to get out the door and, and have to go, oh, shit, how am I doing this? We go, wait a minute, maybe have you been in here the whole time? Are you, are you meant to be here? Does Miss know who you are? There's a man in my room. I should have just screamed and gone, who is that? What is that? Oh, too funny. But yeah, look, I don't know whether my body image would be affected. Like someone said to me recently, Alan, I've got your back. And I said, look, maybe you should reconsider because of how hairy it is. So <laughs> there are certain things that one can't do anything about. But um, mm. look, we'd better leave our, ourselves something to talk about the next time. Yeah, but, we should. Um, but I was going to ask. It's nice to check in with you. Yeah, it's been nice to check in with you. And if people have just arrived, I mean, we've talked about many things. I said the uh, phrase foot fucking when my nine year old daughter walked in to say hello. So for me, that's going to always be a highlight. And that may yes. lead to a, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a lawsuit, a I think. discussion later on. But <laughs> and I a lawsuit wondered, when she divorces you when she's a teenager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She consciously uncouples from her dad who's ruined winkle pickers for her for the rest of her life. Um, um, until we see each other again, mm -hmm. uh, a record to listen to in isolation that, Ooh, I, that people I, might I, not. Yeah. I've struggled a bit with music while I've been isolated. I'm not sure why. I've been doing more home renovations and listening to podcasts. Yeah, because oh. I've just been trying to keep busy to, to, to fend off those feelings of impending doom, which keep visiting all the time. But I've been listening to podcasts a lot um, and I haven't really been listening to music. I tried to listen to Miles Davis' Bitches Brew because it turned 50 the other day and it was, okay. it was too hectic. It was too hectic for me. I was like, oh, oh, too much, too much. So I think I need to... I need something. I, I, I need something, but I'm not sure what it is right now. Music's not soothing me. I don't know why. So maybe you've got a suggestion. Um, I did. I have been listening to a lot of Kenny Rogers though, because he did pass away two yeah. weeks ago, and that was very yeah. sad. And you know how much I loved. Uh, I loved Kenny. Still love Kenny. I, I thought of you when that happened, and mm. I knew that you would be. I didn't contact you because I knew that you would be inconsolable and just listening to the gambler on repeat. <laughs> well, I was listening to more his early 60s sort of country funk psychedelic period style music. Look it up. Something's burning. Classic. Absolute classic. I'm going to go. Oh, there we go. There's the record. I'm going to go and listen to There's that. There's my recommendation. Afternoon. My recommendation for you is a, a guy, he goes under the name Ski Mask, S-K-E-E -E, Mask. Mm -hmm. And there's only one record and it's sort of, look, I hesitate to use terms like glitchy and ambient, and mm -hmm. but it's really meditative. But there's well, lots see, that's what I need. It. That's what I need. Yeah. Well, look, there's lots to it. And the more you listen to it, the more you get out of it. Um, but it's, you can just let yourself be in it. But you can also, it's got, he's really put a lot of effort into it. So, yeah, Ski Mask, S-K-E-E -E Mask. Um, Where's he from? Do you know much about him? No, I don't know much about him at Ooh. all. Um, I think 
he might be German or Finnish or from I don't know Adelaide. So those the are Northern all Europe. options. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that that's my recommendation. So what was the Kenny Rogers one? Uh, something's Burning. And also, uh, you probably know this one. Um, this is when he was with uh, Kenny Rogers. It was new edition or first edition, I think. Just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. That's classic. You will love it. You will love it. It's country psych. It's amazing. Oh. Okay, Late 60s well, country, country psych. That's just wonderful. Yeah. Um, I, I got something off the Twitter today that I thought we could end the show with and I'm not sure if our wonderful producer slash director, Olby, has actually got the footage that we could play, but I thought you might enjoy it. It goes for about a minute and a half and yeah. it's just... It's from TikTok, which is the, the website that all the kids are using and I have no interest in joining because I'd be terrible at it where they just mime stuff from songs. Um, basically, it's just what's happening to people is we're all going a bit batty. It's all a bit bonkers here in quarantine and people are starting to put footage with songs, but this footage is usually quite awful disaster footage. So I don't know if you're interested. It might. I'd, be, I'd like to see your reactions to these and we can... Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> for it. What? <laughs> oh, these are real of me. Oh. Did she get hit by a fish? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no, don't. <laughs> He's tasering <What> himself. <laughs> He's what? Tasering himself. Oh, this is my favourite. One of those things. Oh. Somebody won't tell me the world is <laughs> This one's really good. This guy. This guy's my favourite. I'm so glad that cameras went around, like those sort of cameras went around when I was young. Oh. I wouldn't have a career, Alan. I'd be. There's no <laughs> way. I've done too many bad things. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would have got a face transplant. So that people didn't know who I was. <laughs> well, we'll do it again soon. Yeah. Maybe, um, maybe uh, yeah. one of the things you could do is have more and more men in your room every time we talk. <laughs> just get Daniel to crawl out every time. Yeah, but just like a clown car, you get one yeah. guy crawling out, and then about two minutes later, another guy crawling out. Oh yeah, it can be like where's where's Wally? Just find he can just turn up. Turn up, just crawl across the floor. <laughs> Look, stay safe, and what we'll yeah, we'll arrange our, we'll arrange our meeting place to um, swap the umbrella. Yeah, that'd be good. That'll be good, and I'll put it down on the ground and then now away. Yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah. that umbrella though, Alan. I really did. It's it good bloody one. good. I'll tell you where to get really them. I'll good. get you one for your birthday. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, they're really great. So, All right. Um, lots of love. Take care. See ya.